yesterday I've put in the brake lines on the, uh, the rear axle. Yeah, I think we'll start that again. Yep. Yeah. Johnny's giving me signs. <laughs> it's all right, mate. I'd, yeah. I've just eaten beans. So when we're in a close vicinity, you are. Hi, welcome back to Clean Classics, the, the home of the electric series Land Rover. I'm Ollie. This time we're having a look at the progress on the Series 1 project. We've now got all the metal work fettled and tacked together, so we're progressing nicely on there. We'll be having another look at the little bits and bobs that have been done on the Series 2A project. And we'll be having a bit more of a look at the heating of the cabin and the cooling of the, of the components in the EV system and how, how we work all of that. So, progress on the Series 1 project. Majoritively we've been working on the metal work. We've, um, we've got everything tacked together now. We've done a load of fettles, simple fettles, some of the bolt holes needed, just shifting three mil that way or that way. You know, just getting all the clearances right. It's all going together nicely now. There's, there's one or two other small changes we need to make. I think there's a motor mount, but when that comes off, we know what we need to change about it because it's just a bit, a bit too tight in one, in one area. But otherwise, we're pretty much ready to pull that all back out. It all then gets final welded, all these seams get closed up. We'll then do a, another quick test fit once they're welded up just to ensure nothing's moved. At that point, we might also introduce some more detailed parts in, in and around to make sure everything's fitting well. Once we're happy the whole system builds up nicely, it'll be ready to go off and get powder coated, you know, by which time once that's back, we can, we can then start putting the whole system together and, and start turning this into a living, breathing electric, electric car. One of the compromises we've had to make in the Series 1, because its chassis is two inches shorter, we don't have the room to keep the original radiator like we have done in the Series 2s and 3s. In actual fact, the radiator in the Series 1s is a bit deeper as well, so we just didn't have the space to keep that. It was, there was, once we looked at it, there was no option. So what we've done is we've sourced a suitable motorbike radiator that fits in the space nicely, should have plenty of cooling ability, and then that will go into the motor and inverter and charger cooling loop. Basically what we do, all of the batteries in our systems are passively cooled as they are from the Nissan LEAF, um, but the inverter needs some sort of amb ambient temperature coolant running through, mainly to flush the heat out of the IGBTs which are, which are creating the, 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 the frequency that drives the motor. It also then goes around a coolant jacket in the motor just to take any excess heat generated there when, when, it's, when it's working hard. And then it also loops through the charger, which also is, is effectively an inverter that's, that's manipulating the power as it comes in so that it can charge the vehicle. All we have is closed loop. It's not a pressurized system. Fill it in the cap there. And there's a little motor that just circulates it round and just keeps everything, just keeps running the heat out of stuff to prevent it from, you know, overheating anything like that. Other progress on this project, Alfie's been having a look at how we do the occupant heating. In the series twos and threes, we use a PTC heater. Effectively, you plug the high voltage into it. Once, once you send high voltage to a PTC heater, it generates heat. Fortunately enough, the PTC heater we use fits inside a series three heater matrix. So we do a simple swap out and it's really nice and simple. For earlier cars that use the Smith's heater and, and other sort of in-cab mounted heaters, we've looked at a few options, adding heating from the high voltage. The reason we need to add heating to the, to the car is because the heat used to come from the old, the, the sort of excess heat from the engine, the petrol or diesel engine. In fact, in the early cars, there used to be a tap under here to turn heat on or off. It basically plums hot water from the, from the engine coolant system through a little heat exchanger that then gets blown, air gets blown through. Now, from our conversion point standpoint, we've got two options. Either we supply some hot water like it used to have, so we need a high voltage powered water heater, a pump, somewhere to fill it, you know, a, 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 another, another sort of, like the coolant circuit, we need another one to heat the, the, 
the heat exchanger in the cabin. We did look at that, but actually the, it, it, the, the options out there were a bit unsuitable. It's, it's always gonna end up being a less efficient way of doing it. You end up, you heat the water and then there's losses there and, and then you get losses in transmitting the water. So the PTC is always the most efficient. So we looked at all of our options there. So basically what we want is the most efficient way of getting energy from the battery into heat inside. And what it's looking like to us is, is we need to do something with the Smith's heater inside. And Alfie's been looking at a design that means we can incorporate a PTC and more modern fan behind the original Smith's heater fascia. So Alfie will take, take you guys through that as to what we've done there. But it's looking like it's gonna be a really nice, neat, neat option. This, we, we're also using the same sort of principle to do the, the military style. This is a slightly different heater type that you can find in the series Land Rover. So we're gonna also try and, whilst we've got attention in that arena, we're gonna try and get something so we've got a solution for all cars. So one of our more recent projects has been trying to work on the heater for our cabin and our windscreen demister. In a traditional Land Rover, a lot of that would be done through waste heat from the engine for a heat exchanger, which we don't have a lot of waste heat really because we don't have an engine anymore. So one of the parts we've got is the original Smith's heater casing. This had a, a matrix in behind it, which we've lost because we don't use that anymore. But this effectively has the two pipes in the top here, which the ducts will take hot air to the windscreen for demisting. And then when you want um, heat inside the cabin, these simply just flap open. So we've been repurposing that with a bit of uh, modern technology. So one of the things we've used is a 12 volt radiator fan off a motorbike, very simple. And then that together with this, which is a PTC he heater, a positive temperature coefficient heater, which basically has four cables going into it. Two of those are from our high voltage system and they just power the element. And then the other two are just same as anything else that's 12 volt, just the feed and the for the switch. And we will piggyback those off the feed for the fan, which then means that in the cabin, you can have the fan running without the heater. But obviously we never want the heater running without the fan because that's just going to cause a fire. But with those together and then the casing, we kind of stack them up and uh, should get a pretty neat solution. So this is one of the first models we've made just of a 3D printed uh, plate with the original Smith casing bolted on there. And as you can see, it sort of clamps in place with the 12 volt motor in behind. And then there's another plate and a casing sort of being 3D printed at the moment. And that will allow this PTC heater to just be held there and the entire thing will sort of be shrouded in the casing, but then with enough room for airflow to sort of come in from the sides and be drawn in by the fan. So this is an update on the uh, Series 2A that I've been cracking on with. Uh, so I've been rebuilding the steering box. So that's had all new gaskets, all new seals. Everything's been checked out. The worm drive's been checked out and it is all in tip top order. So I've rebuilt it um, and I've set it so that there's the least amount of slack there possible without it wearing on its parts uh, and I'm just about to put the arms on so I've got to grease the ball joints and then I've got to put them on the arms and then put them on because otherwise it won't fit. Uh, the steering relay has been put in so I've put the bottom plate on there uh, and the top bolts and that's all ready to go. So carrying on with the 2A build I've 
been plumbing in the brake lines on the rear axle. I've also plumbed in the breather for the rear axle up the brake line and we're only waiting on the proper P-clips for the brake lines. So after they're in, this should be all good. I've got to connect it up at the front to the master cylinder and then we can bleed it and it's ready to go. And I'll show you the master cylinder in a second. Thanks for watching. We've actually just hit 500 subscribers, which is super exciting. Really cool way to start the year for our channel. Um, if you've been enjoying the, the content we're creating, please, please subscribe, like the videos. It makes all the difference and it's, it's really helping us get all this stuff out there, which is, is it's really fun to share what we do here with everyone. So thank you so much for all the support. And, and yeah, if you're liking it, hit that subscribe button.